Hello and welcome to Broccoli News, Radio Broccoli's weekly show with news, interviews and information, including updates on all you need to know about what's happening in and around the hospital. I'm Alan Joyce and tonight we look back on another incredible night for Radio Broccoli at the National Hospital Broadcasting Association Awards, where we picked up three awards, including gold for best speech package and silver for the biggest award of them all, Station of the Year 2017. We'll play you our award-winning entries and get reaction from last night. Then at 7.30, your chance to win some Radio Broccoli goodies without leaving your bed on Bedside Bingo with David Rouch. Good luck if you're playing along. And then at 8 o'clock tonight, it's all your choice of tunes on the Sunday Request Show with Keith Reeve. So stay tuned to London's longest-running hospital radio station, the gold-winning Radio Broccoli, still officially number one in London. So last night, a group of us were in Bolton for the annual Hospital Broadcasting Association Awards, which are the Oscars of hospital radio. It was another incredible evening for Radio Broccoli, picking up three awards in total. Bronze for Best Specialist Music Programme for Music Travels with Daniel Edward, a gold for Best Speech Package for the Story of Radio Broccoli, a five-part documentary which we ran last October. And to round off the evening, we won silver for Station of the Year. So it means that Radio Broccoli has now finished in the top three stations of the year for the last four years in a row. We'll get some reaction soon, but first let's hear the award-winning package for Radio Broccoli for Station of the Year. This is Radio Broccoli. You're listening to Radio Broccoli, the radio station for the patients of the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital in Stanmore. It's 7.30pm on the 2nd of October. My name is Barry Cobden and I'm one of the founder members of Radio Broccoli. I'm finding this quite difficult to say. Congratulations, Radio Broccoli, on 50 years, the longest serving radio station for hospital patients in London. Long may you be successful. It's half past seven, which is the time we started. It's been an important part of my life for more than half of it, and I'm really happy to be able to contribute. I hope it continues to do what it does. I think it pays an incredibly a uh, valuable part in assisting uh, raising the spirits of our listeners. It's a place where uh, I've had a lot of laughs and uh, uh, I've nothing but praise for the place, and I've nothing but happy memories of it. I've been volunteering here at Radio Broccoli for 43 years. I came here and it immediately clicked and uh, it's, it's just been a fantastic 40 odd years. I'm very proud it's still here, I mean it's, it's, it's due credit to its long-serving members. Um, certainly to see it running now, I'm immensely proud that it's still here and it's producing good works. This has been part of my life for 39 years and I hope it will continue to be part of my life for, for the rest of my life in some way. Um, there's been some amazing times. Um, you know, I was a patient myself. I can look back into those days where I was a patient here, never dreamed that all those years ago when I was a child as a patient here that I would be involved in something like this. It's difficult for one to sit here and say how proud I am that I was involved in Radio Broccoli from its inception. But I'm very pleased and proud that it's been run and continued for 50 years. And I hope that Radio Broccoli, along with all the other hospital radio stations, around the place can continue to provide that benefit to the patients of their hospitals. That was founder member Barry Cobden on Radio Broccoli's 50th anniversary. The station continues to broadcast to the patients of the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital in Stanmore. We've worked hard at Radio Broccoli to build links with all departments of the hospital and that was recognised by the RNOH Chief Executive Rob Hurd at our 50th reunion party. I remain immensely supportive and grateful for the work of Radio Broccoli. So nearly half the lifetime of this hospital since those six young men uh, talked to my predecessor about setting up uh, on this site. Um, we have a growing volunteering community and Radio Broccoli are valued, the volunteers are a valued part uh, of that community here at the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital. Patients do stay for less time in hospital these days but we still have patients who are vulnerable in their beds that require uh, uh, the ability to talk to a human being, a visitor, a friendly face, and the sense of community uh, that Radio Broccoli supports 
uh, at the Stanmore site and indeed in, in your support of the events that, that we do to, to get it out, out there amongst the hospital community is highly valued. So I was merely going to say thank you, well done for making it uh, to 50 and good luck for the next 50 years. Thank you very much. So here, in 2016, in the age of music and shows on demand, Radio Broccoli has made changes, including a new streaming service on the hospital's free Wi-Fi, as well as Listen Again shows on our YouTube channel. We also continue to broadcast regular news programmes with updates on what's happening in and around the hospital. So earlier on today, the RNOH had its biggest annual fundraising event as the RNOH charity hosted the annual Buttercup Walk. Radio Broccoli broadcast live highlights of the event whilst a team of reporters were on site to speak to some of the participants. So now it's your chance to listen back to some of the high points. Let's join our reporting team of Emma O'Connor, Marge Walker and firstly Graham Rich. This is Sunday morning at the RNH hospital and this is the Buttercup Walk 2016 doing my rounds here. Okay, right now I'm going to speak with a very special lady. This is Vivian Cripps. Hi Vivian. Hi, hi. And, and tell me, why are you here today? Because the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital is one of the dearest things in my heart and it always will be. I was born with a, a congenital talapesa quina varus, a club foot, and I came here under the care of Mr Fripp who uh, operated and I'm, you know, I've had no problems ever since. I had many happy childhood days as a patient in the, ho in the hospital and uh, I had a wonderful time. Teenage boys was, ward was the next door, <laughs> Colonel, Colonel Williams ward, and we had midnight feasts. I really loved every minute. Now I have just completed an amazing walk with Nina She's completed the walk after two hours. Now, Nina was just telling me that the doctor said she would never walk again. But I have watched Nina take every agonising step from the start of the Buttercup walk. Absolutely tremendous effort. T tell us a bit about your story. Well, basically, I'm a spinal patient. I was injured in 2012. And um, after nine months of staying at Stanmore, it was made clear to me that I I'd never walk again. Nina's sheer determination to prove her medical team wrong uh, has got her to complete this walk today. I did it for all of the people at the hospital that helped take care of me and all the new patients that need equipment as well. The hospital, to stay at the hospital, it's, it costs over £600 a night and I'd never be able to pay back the hospital for keeping me for nine months for £600 a night. And I want to big up Dr. Gould and I want to big up my physio in the hospital, Selena. She's amazing. And everybody on the spinal ward, it's Nina. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything you've done for me. Did you hear of Rage of Broccoli while you were in the hospital? Yes, I used to play bingo every Sunday. <laughs> Did you win? Uh, always. I want, a, I, I want a, a, a mug. I want a little furry friend and they've got a lifetime supply of pens there, so you're going to win a pen too. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, that's what we like to hear, that's what we do. My name is Marge Walker. A Marge, a Marge, big up a Marge, big up a Marge Walker. Woo, 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 woo. She was the real Walker today. So I'm here with Clifford and uh, you're here from Radiate, is that correct? Yes, I'm here from Radiate Harrow. We help vulnerable people in the community, homeless people, I had a serious alcohol problem, uh, of which I'm currently recovering from, uh, and I wish to help other people in the community, in Harrow, in whichever way I can, basically. This coming week is International Hygiene Week, and in the studio with me today, I've got two of the nurses from Infection Control. If you try to do your hand hygiene technique using alcohol and gel, we can actually check whether you're following the correct process because there is a process, there is a technique to use to make sure that every aspect of the hand is covered when you wash your hands and unless the whole hand is clean, any part of the hand where microorganisms is still being left or not washed out or cleaned using the alcohol hand gel can still serve as a means of transmitting microorganisms to patients. So I'm joined here today by Zoe, who is a senior play specialist here at the hospital. I've got this object in front of me. <laughs> it looks like a small MRI scanner. So this is um, 
a replica of our MRI scanner that we have in the hospital. And the purpose of the scanner is that we are trying to help children to have MRI scans awake rather than have a general anaesthetic, which at the moment the majority of children have to have a general anaesthetic. And through preparation, if they know about it and they can see the machine beforehand, hopefully this is going to reduce any anxieties that they may have about their scans. We can demonstrate that no problem. So yeah, let's um, have a listen to this. So I'm it's just going to at the moment. That's, there we go. So this is the first sound that they hear. Um, so um, once they hear the chirping sound, the, the table is all ready um, to move. So we put the um, Barbie or Action Man um, on, the, on the table and we press enter and the table moves in. It's moving in now. It is moving in now and she's gonna get, uh, Barbie's going to go in halfway and this is the first sound that they hear. And we also have a volume control on the um, on the remote control, so they can turn it up and down. Yeah. Um, so it goes through a whole sequence of about eight sounds that our scanners make. Okay. Um, so after a few minutes, um, the next one will come on. I'm going to say that my chief executive special award winners are Anna Makowska and Jill Coughlin. And I hope they're here. Hello. Well done to Anna and Jill, and I caught up with one of the winners afterwards. So, Anna, that must have come as a bit of a shock to you. Absolutely, I didn't expect this. I'm very happy, and uh, it's my second year in RNOH, and I really enjoy it. I work within the fantastic team, and I'm very proud to be part of it. And what would you like to personally say to the chief executive if he's listening to this about getting the, the special award? Uh, thank you so much. I didn't expect this, um, and really, I'm, I'm shocked. And I think I will have a better comment tomorrow. <laughs> well done. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Week commencing the 16th of May 2016 is Mental Health Awareness, and uh, I've got in the studio today Dr. Declan Curtis from the uh, psychology team here at the RNH. It's getting people to face their issues, isn't it? How easy is it to make that relationship with someone for you as a psychologist? There is, there is times where you just have to say, this person isn't ready. I mean, the last thing that we do in psychology is bring people to a change that they're not ready for, you know, because people would resent you for it. That, you know, we all have friends and family where we look at them and we think, God almighty, it's so easy. We, we know what needs to happen, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you point it out to them, you're the worst in the world. And that's because they're not ready to go there yet. That, uh, that safety that I spoke about isn't there yet. So when, when it comes to patients who come in, some are ready to change and some are not. And you just have to help a person where they're at. Instead, we need to say, OK, this is your life. How can I help you with it? Well, next tonight we look ahead to the potentially the closest battle for Christmas number one in years. The bookie's current favourite is by the Greenwich and Lewisham NHS Choir. Now, Sam Weston played bass on the track, which was recorded a couple of years ago. He spoke to our reporter, Keith Reeve. It's a lovely arrangement of two classic pop songs, yeah. the Bridge Over Troubled Water, of course, yeah, yeah. and more recently, Fix You by Coldplay. Yeah. Do you know how the, the amalgamation of the two songs came about? Because it worked well, so well. Yeah, exactly. Well, it was actually originally arranged for another choir called the Adam Street Singers, who are based in Adam Street in the Strand in Charing Cross right. and uh, I've been playing with them for about two years now as well and uh, Pete basically adapted the arrangement for this choir um, it was put on the table as one of the things that uh, the choir could have sung when it came to them doing their single and it, there was uh, quite a like sort of a, a large vote for that to be the single they recorded basically so it's just kind of a Pete is just really good at his mashups and we've 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 done some arrangements together of other things and and it's just something that he's really good at he's a really gifted um choral arranger I think so mm. especially kind of finding the right things that work and taking two different thematic ideas and placing them together so mm. yeah it's a great arrangement though and we have a special visitor today. It's uh, Max Whitlock. I'm, a, I'm an ambassador for the RNOH, uh, so I sort of represent this charity, and I picked this one because a friend of mine uh, was treated here. Um, and, uh, you know, he said only great things about it, and I thought it was a great charity to, to back. You were the first British man ever to win a gold, weren't you? Yes, I was, yeah. <laughs> so that was, that was the history part. So uh, for me, it was a massive target to go and do that, and, uh, you know, happy to pull it off on the day. 
So are you all very supportive of each, of each other, or mm. is there sometimes some rivalry between you? There is rivalry, but it's a friendly rivalry. Um, we, we've got a lot of respect for each other in gymnastics and uh, know how much how much hours we put into training and uh, how hard we do train. So when we go out there, we just want the best for each other and the better for, for Great Britain, the better it is for us. Above all, though, we continue to interact with our patients and regular programmes from the wars have produced some memorable moments. And we're going to say a very good evening to a young lady who's been on the war for a good while. Good evening to Marina. Yeah. How have you found life on the ward? A bit hard, but I coped. But you got some good news. Hello. Tell me, tell me, tell me. I'm going home tomorrow. Yay, that's great. Yay. Fantastic. Tina, would you like to send a special message to uh, Marina? Um, Marina, I hope you get better. I hope you walk again. And hope you have a happy life. Everything will be fine no matter what. Now, we're at the bedside with Donald. Hello, Donald. Good evening to Duke of, Duke of Gloucester listeners. Um, and I hope you're having a good, good evening. Oh, see, he could take over for me, definitely, couldn't you, Donald? Well, I don't know about that. You seem very adept to me. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, you were telling us just before we came on air that you had worked in Billingsgate for a long time as well. Is that right? Absolutely right. I've worked in Billingsgate Fish Market for over 50 years, but enjoyed every single day. And if I could get out of hospital tomorrow, I'd go back there once again tomorrow. Oh, that is wonderful. This is Radio Broccoli. And that was uh, Silver, a winning piece for Station of the Year and uh, some wonderful clips there, some wonderful memories. Uh, So with me now next door, I have uh, trustee Keith Reeve, who was with me in Bolton last night and uh, both of us uh, severely lacking in sleep. Um, But uh, he's with me now to uh, give a bit more reaction. So, Keith. Good evening. (laughs) Your reaction to last night? Well, it was another wonderful evening for Radio Broccoli um, and uh, delighted, of course, for the fourth year running that we're in the top three hospital radios in the UK. And I think we've been nominated a couple of years before that as well, but didn't actually win. But for a small station, uh, you know, big, uh, bigger fish in the pond, we're a small sort of uh, minnow fiddling around in there. Um, It's a fantastic tribute to our team here that worked so hard to bring the diversity, the breadth and the quality of programming to our to our audience out there. Uh, and we're consistently hitting that now where it needs to be hit. And we had some really nice comments from the judges on the uh, particularly the station of the year. They said uh, it's clear that the station is an integral part of the hospital and the local community. Another judge said the quality of the speech broadcasting is to be commended. We've done a lot of work on speech, haven't we, at Radio Broccoli over the recent years? That's right. I mean, we, we try to get out there to cover events and things that we, we think will be interested to you, our dear listener, things that might help you in your rehabilitation or changes of, of lifestyle as a result of uh, your medical treatment. Also, events that bring home the uh, the changes that are taking place here at the RNOH. Massive changes, obviously, with the rebuild going on, the challenges that face the NHS day to day and seem to be ever increasing. We try to bring that news, that information to you so that, you know, it's of interest, it might be of use to you, it's entertaining, it's informative, and we're doing exactly what we think and obviously other people think we should be doing for the uh, RNOH. Now, of course, you attended the entire conference, the uh, Hospital Broadcasting Association Conference, conference over the last three days. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the highlights of what happened over the weekend. Well, basically, the conference is uh, much like probably any other conference, really. You have seminars that are interesting and relevant to hospital radio and a whole diversity of subjects to do with recruitment, retention, to do with publicity, to do with how to do things better, how things look or sound when they go wrong and things that perhaps people don't always appreciate when they do go wrong visits to local hospital radio stations and also community stations and sometimes in certain parts of the countries uh, various commercial and BBC stations so you get a, a huge uh, avenue of, of interest and a world of interest in radio generally and it also is a fantastic chance to network with people from other stations all around the UK big stations small stations we all work off of one another get ideas and we learn and we we develop good relationships as a result mm, always a always a fun weekend should just mention actually some of the other winners over the course of the last 24 hours in the uh, hospital broadcasting association awards because although radio broccoli did very well i think it's fair to say the evening belonged to a certain radio tyne side <laughs> um who generally do very well in these awards but they actually won the gold this year for station of the year so well done to them uh, they also won gold in special event best specialist music program and 
Best Newcomer as well. Mm. Uh, station promotion went to great, uh, Radio Glamorgan and Best Programme with multiple presenters to Radio Charwell. Um, so quite a range of different stations there. But uh, Daniel Edward, her very own Daniel Edward, won bronze for a Best Specialist Music Programme. So yeah. well done to Daniel. Yeah, well done. Congratulations. Daniel's been with us a few years. He went to university, happily came back to us. And uh, obviously, you know, first year back with us, wins an award. Can't be bad, can it? And of course, now one of our trustees as well, along with yourself and David Rauch, who we'll be hearing from shortly on that Bedside Bingo. Yep. Now, anyone listening to this thinking, oh, I want to be part of this award-winning radio station, we're always looking for volunteers, aren't we? So what's the best way of people getting involved? Well, basically, drop us an email, studio at radiobrotley.org, or give us a call on the internal phone, 5483, or give us a call on the uh, pay phone if you want to, uh, you've got a mobile handy, uh, 0208 954 6591. Anything you think you might be able to add to the, the team here. It doesn't have to be broadcasting. It doesn't have to be going on air. We need people that can help with the administration, with the technical side, with the public relations. Um, all sorts of aspects of Radio Brockney need volunteers. And if you have an interest, a skill, or you want to develop one in those areas, please get in touch. Mm, we'd love to have you on board. Thank you very much, Keith, for now. And, of course, you're back at uh, 8 o'clock tonight with all your requests. Indeed. Just give us those requests and dedications, lovely listener, and we'll play them for you in the uh, Sunday request show. Super stuff. Thank you very much, Keith, for now. Uh, that was Keith Reeve, who you'll hear later on this evening. Now, as I mentioned, we also won gold for Best Speech Package for The Story of Radio Broccoli, which is a documentary that we put together uh, late last year for our anniversary. Uh, this was the exact moment it was announced. Gold Awards! Radio Brooklyn! Yay! Uh, you'll be able to hear the Gold Award winning documentary in full over the next five Sundays in April on this very slot. Plus you'll be able to hear it online now on our YouTube channel. So if you're not going to be in the hospital, you can go to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash Radio Broccoli, and you can hear the entire documentary on there. Uh, but let's hear the award winning entry now. So many of my best friends have come from Radio Broccoli. My wife has come from Radio Broccoli. This has been part of my life for 39 years and I hope it will continue to be part of my life for, for the rest of my life. I have nothing but praise for the place, I have nothing but happy memories of it. Everyone here is unpaid, gives up their free time and puts their all into the place. It's been a, an important part of my life for more than half of it and I'm really happy to be able to contribute. I've been volunteering here at Radio Broccoli for 43 years and uh, it's, it's just been a fantastic 40 odd years. The year is 1966 and the Beatles have just released their hit album Revolver. Miniskirts are all the rage and England have just won the World Cup. And in a tiny air raid shelter in northwest London, Radio Broccoli is born. Those buildings weren't intended for long-term uh, occupancy. The reason we had that room was because the radio system for the whole of the hospital was situated there, but that was intrinsically very damp, and that was quite problematical because it meant that uh, it did na nasty things to uh, crystal cartridges, which uh, we had to use in those days. And that's when we realised that the crystal cartridges had slowly dissolved in the damp atmosphere. We had no funds initially, and it was funded out of the fact that we had some, I had some equipment, I built the mixing console for it. We just borrowed and cashed where we could, the hospital had a bit of stuff, and we did appeal in the local newspaper for tape recorders, and we in, ended up with a whole collection, which now would be deemed as museum pieces. And uh, we got microphones given to us, people had sat around. So yes, it was a bit of gifting, um, quite a bit of our own money. Do you know, I don't remember raising money to buy anything. We built it, scrounged it. Radio Broccoli has always been a station where people do things. So that was the air raid shelter next door to Hut One. And there was an arrangement whereby the hospital's uh, radio distribution system could be switched over to services that came from the chapel. Um, so there was an alternative input to, the, uh, to that system. And Ian extended that to Radio Broccoli. And that's where we started and we were in there for several months. And I don't think that the trial period has ever ceased. The music for the station was initially our own material, our own records, but we did approach the record companies and the record companies were very good at giving us demo discs that they didn't want anymore when they had clear outs. There's a, a famous uh, publication called the New Musical Express 
They had boxes and boxes of records. We asked um, if we could go along and grab arms full of these records. And that added to the library as well. Originally, by the bedside, there was a simple switch which selected the three positions off, well, that's a very useful position, light program, now called Radio 2, and the home service. When we broadcast, we switched off Radio 2 and replaced it. Nobody ever complained about that, by the way. Radio OBs were done on a long stretch of wire and um, health and safety were restricted for doing that sort of thing, but we could achieve it and they allowed us to do it. The hospital patients seemed to appreciate what we were doing. It became, we felt that we became a useful service to the patients in the hospital. One of the things that became very obvious, visiting patients in the wards was itself a very, very important service. It was a cold October evening and somebody had decided to invite the local MP who was requested not to make it a part of political broadcast, um, which he did. And, um, and I think he was curtailed by the wonderful Mike Solomons. We had an angle poise lamp on the table and we had the mixer and he stood and he gave a short speech and um, opened Radio Broccoli. 7.30 in the evening, Sunday, October the 2nd, 1966. Mike Solomons, Ian Downs and Barry Cobden, three of the men who set up Radio Broccoli. Certainly to see it running now, and I'm immensely proud that it's still here and it's producing good works. It's difficult for one to sit here and say how proud I am that I was involved in Radio Broccoli from its inception. I'm ever so proud of you, the whole hospital radio station, because what we started off as being a bit of fun, you've kept it going and developed it and made it better and better and better. Well done. Thank you. The gold winning entry for Best Speech Package 2017 at the Hospital Broadcasting Association Awards. And don't forget, if you want to listen to Broccoli News or Broccoli News Extra again, you can do via our website. Go to youtube.com forward slash Radio Broccoli. Plus, you can check out Broccoli News Extra Mondays to Fridays at midday for another chance to hear some of our recent interviews. Up next on Radio Broccoli, it is Bedside Bingo, your chance to win some super Radio Broccoli goodies without leaving in bed. David Rouch will be calling out the numbers. And then at eight tonight, it's all your choice of tunes on the Sunday Request Show with Keith Reeve. Broccoli News takes a break for a month, so from next week, you can hear the gold award-winning documentary The Story of Radio Broccoli. Part one is next Sunday at seven o'clock. From me, Alan Joyce, good night.